Hi, is this Predator? Indubitably, it's Predator. Predator, how are you today? Fantastic, man. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm really great. It's great to be speaking with you. We're huge fans. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Oh, this is awesome. I'm, I feel like um, this is a long time coming, and, uh, you know, I've just been waiting for this day, Predator. I'm I'm a massive fan. I just want you to know that I, I had the poster on my bedroom wall for many, many years of you just standing there stoically with all your weapons, and there was a list on the side, and it showed each weapon and what its capabilities were, and I just was like... That's the pinnacle of awesome dudes right there. Well, that is very much a coincidence because I've always had a headshot of you that I've always admired from afar with your attributes and your cunning and your wit. So I guess it's a mutual respect or admiration that we have for each other. Wow. Yeah, this is like uh, almost kismet that this was <laughs> happening right now. <laughs> you two finally together. It warms my heart. It warms my heart, too, and it also warms the many body parts and limbs and other organs that I've collected of people over the years. Just yeah. like a random pile of cockles and stuff? <laughs> we, we need to... So how do you even store all this stuff, Predator? I mean, what... what I, I don't even know. I mean, okay, so in Predator Part 2, we got a little glimpse of inside the ship, and we saw kind of a trophy area and stuff, and which... Uh, you know, side note, I'm a massive fan of Predator Part 2. And um, so, I mean, where does all of it go? How, how do you choose what stays and what goes? Well, you see, we collect things and then we auction them off to bidders uh, of people that, much like yourself and other fans, who are definitely uh, think Predator 2 is the better of the two. I mean, it's the only one, in my opinion, that's worth mentioning. I, I, don't get me wrong, Predator 1 is great. Everything they did after Predator 2, they did without me. So, I mean, I, it, as far as that goes, uh, to answer your question, uh, it, it is just hawked all over space. Um, you know, after I've uh, cleaned off all the skulls and uh, spinal cords, uh, it moves on. And it goes into memorabilia, and um, other people collect it. And so uh, we can only keep a trophies for so long. Bet you didn't expect to hear that. I did not. That's amazing. Have you ever been on Predator's eBay account to maybe looked at some of these items that he's got up for sale? I, I have not. I need to go immediately. You could use some like uh, Predator used meat or something for your own collection. I'm not sure if I can afford it, but I would love to. We've got plenty of femur bones for sale, and our uh, highest bidder takes all. So uh, currently, uh, there's a bunch of different things that are being hawked and um, distributed throughout uh, the galaxy. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, you should look into that. And, uh, you know, it, it, this is just a very unique and fun experience you know, I don't get to talk about the old days very much because I hardly do anything anymore. And, uh, you know, just kind of collect royalties and do uh, uh, voiceovers when the call is for it. But I've checked out of the Predator franchise a long time ago, and I'm just sort of uh, waiting them, waiting for them to do something that, uh, you know, throw a script my way that meets my liking, or that, you know, offer me enough money to get back into it, and they haven't done that yet. That's a serious bummer. Predator, did you get to keep any of the weapons from Predator 2 by chance? Oh, those are all mine, mate. Custom and everything. Oh. Uh, they sort of just, uh, you know, they said, be natural. Because it, the thing about it is, is that I, I started, uh, you know, wanting to be an actor, uh, classically tra Shakespearean trained. And uh, if I had my druthers, I would have been doing, like, romantic comedies and these deep, deep heartfelt dramas. But they say, now stick to what you know. And, uh, you know, Stan Winston sort of uh, made me, you know, quite literally, in fact. And so everything that you see, the, the ship, uh, you know, the dreadlocks, the, the fishnets, uh, all the fancy weapons and gadgets, that's all mine. Wow. That's amazing. Predator, I have a question for you. On your home planet... 
Does everyone else have a similar like Ringo Starr type dialect, or is that something you've picked up over the years from uh, pillaging and ravaging other planets? Thank you for actually asking that and mentioning that. Um, it, it is something I've picked up over the years because, like I say, I was uh, shooting to be a Shakespearean classically trained play actor, and that's the first time I cut my teeth in acting was doing that sort of thing. And then so that's where I adopted uh, this beautiful dialect that you now hear. And I've just been sort of you know, learning more and more of a vocabulary as I talk to people over the years. And I, I have to say that you guys have been a big help for that. Oh, time. that's amazing. When you're collecting trophies, are there like if let's say you were to obtain the spine of Justin Tunkline, would that be worth more? to your people than say like just some regular <laughs> schlub you might find down at high V. If it had tons head connected to it, actually, then it would be worth a lot. And if it had tons mullet connected to his head, connected to his spinal column, it would be worth even more. And so, it, yeah, man, uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of earth women out there that would pay to have, Tom's head and his spinal cord just hanging in their living room. I know this to be true. Hmm. That's wow. something you'd probably have to put a reserve on on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I appreciate. I feel very flattered over this, but let's. I would like to remain friendly, Predator, if we can. I'd like to keep my spine as as long as possible. Oh yes, man. Uh, yeah, it, 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 just hypothetical terms. I mean, if you. Uh, you know, say if you were in like a tropical climate or something like that, and you had a gun in your hand, well, sorry, mate, but that's <laughs> on you. I know I just have to do what comes natural to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, you know, just don't go uh, south of the equator with uh, any kind of, you know, war or conflict going on and don't have a gun, then you should just be all right. Yeah. Don't go sleeveless. It's ridiculous. I have another question about uh, your friendship with Carl Weathers. What is he like in real life? Oh, my God. Carl was a, was an amazing man. Truly um, a sweetheart, a humanitarian. He was so much different than his screen persona. You know, he was, he was not a tough guy. He was very sensitive. Um, he was very capable of doing great damage to men that were twice his size, but... At its core, Carl was just a true human and uh, a lovable friend. You know, kept in touch with him, you know, many times over the years, and congratulated him and uh, sustaining a career and uh, remaining, you know, popular and being able to sort of, you know, put his career on hiatus for a little bit and do the things that he enjoyed doing. And so I have to say, Carl was one of my favorites. Uh, I got to be honest with you. If it's, uh, you know, we're taking the top three people that I've loved working with. It was Carl, it was Danny, and it was Bill Paxton, the best man that you could ever ask for for co-stars. Man, do you still have his arm? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we we gave that back. We sewed it on after the bit, ah, and nice. uh, you know. He was able to be functional again. He was able to use it throughout the rest of his life. So, uh, you know, that was an amazing sacrifice that he made to be able to sort of, uh, you know, method act in that role. That's just lovely. So I've got to ask now, so what is your feelings on, you know, the, the, the later on the Alien versus Predator uh, franchise and is there really a connection with you and the xenomorphs is that real or was it made up i mean what's the deal i know we saw a, a skeleton head of a xenomorph in in the ship in predator 2 so i assume there's some kind of re real connection there yeah uh, that was purely fictional and um, that was actually done against my wishes because i had already had established myself and i had had uh, respect in admiration for the for the alien franchise and the xenomorphs themselves and so i thought the marriage of the two was just completely unnecessary because we're both two completely separate things and why would you even try to mishmash that and try to make it sort of a epic battle of sorts because i'll just be honest with you if it was me versus any of the xenomorphs i'm cashing in my chips because i don't stand a chance 
uh, the Xenomorphs, you know, what we, they lack in, in, you know, maybe intelligence and uh, technology and weaponry, they make up for numbers and cunning. And so um, I was very much against that. I, uh, you know, I'm all right with the video games and the comic book series that came after that, but the idea for a franchise and to try to make that into a movie was totally unnecessary. And let me tell you another thing about uh, the Predator being in Antarctica. It, it, how the hell did that ever happen? <laughs> how did the agree. Predator ever find his way to Antarctica and have any interest in colonizing, killing, and or breeding pre- uh, xenomorphs down there? Yeah. It, it just doesn't add up. And I think they just wanted to be generous and they wanted to bring Lance Henriksen back into the franchise. And so I think that's how we got Alien vs. Predator. They wanted to cash in. Listen, I agree with you. But I have to say, um, oh, so well, I should ask, how, what's your feelings on the new Prey? Were you not involved with that at all? None whatsoever, mate. I haven't done anything since Predator 2. And I was completely underwhelmed by Prey. To be mm. honest with you, mm. um, it wasn't my bag of bones. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, not only was the timing wrong, uh, the acting was subpar, and the storyline and or location of everything was not conducive to the timeline. And you, here you have these Native American children. Oh, they were supposed to be in Canada or something like that. And they're speaking perfect English. And not only that, but they're arguing like siblings, like brats who live in the valley of california it was just so unnatural that i i couldn't bear to watch 10 minutes of it yeah wow you make some really good points i feel you on the um on the both the speaking english was really weird to me and the weird bickering but i have to say i liked it better than the alien versus predator stuff that that stuff i don't even know I don't know. <laughs> so the prey, the prey, for some reason, felt refreshing, and I was hoping that you were a part of that, but um, and hoping it was going to go back in another direction. But of course, we can never have the uh, cocaine fueled uh, ridiculousness of Predator Part Two again. I don't think the public would let that stand anymore. Exactly. I mean, if anything, you just you watch it for the silly costume that they're supposed to be in the future and it's supposed to be portrayed in like Los Angeles or something like that. And here you got all these, you know, Jamaicans dressed up like they're in a seventies Bob Marley video. And <laughs> it, 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 just, it was silly. It, it, we loved it. We had a blast beautiful. with every minute of it. Yeah. And, you know, we, 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 you sort of get to know the predator and his origins more. And that, I thought that was a very, a brilliant light that we had brought that into. So, yeah. Um, I very, it, it's just going to be, it's going to be hard for them to entice me to get me back into a role, you know, unless they recreate something like that, which is going to be difficult now because they've brought the Predator in so many different directions. And it, they, it, I've done consultation for other films, like the film that was just titled The Predator. I actually, they modeled the the practical effects stuntman after me uh you know the cgi that came after that with like the super predator that was all super fluos and completely ridiculous but um i was impressed with the way that they at least made the predator look for about uh, maybe a third of that movie Mm, yes well i have to say predator um as we all know, there's no stopping what can't be stopped, and there's no killing what can't be killed. And I think we're all speaking about you. So, uh, you know, your time's definitely not up. Not at all. Well, thank you. You know, it's good to know that there's still people out there who are pulling for me and um, seeing, you know, as you had mentioned before, Predator 2 being your favorite, recognizing, um, you know, the heart of it and uh, exactly you know, the perfection behind what we were doing and trying to create. And I believe that the first two will live on in legacy for a very long time. And even though Prey was extremely popular, I think over time people are going to forget about it because the other thing that bothered me with Prey was all the well-meaning rhetoric that they were forcing upon you throughout the whole thing. You know, in predator killing animals is just unnecessary. Why would he go out of his way to kill a snake or like, what was it, a wolf or something else? I yeah. just thought that was ridiculous. But, you know, that's 
me being curmudgeonous in my old age and not being able to adapt to the new stuff and new times. So the newer generation might have a completely different take on that, and that's okay. So, Predator, you mentioned now maybe doing some more things behind the scenes and, and voiceover things here and there, but what are you up to otherwise as far as your career? Do you consider yourself to be semi-retired, or are you going to maybe, I guess, settle down and uh, start a, a Predator family, perhaps? Or, or what's in the cards for you here for the future? Well, I've already got that. I've already got grandkids and everything, so that box is checked. And, <laughs> you know, you could call it being semi-retired, but again, they just haven't given me an offer that, you know, seems kosher or like suitable. So, you know, I'm just nowadays I'm still just keeping my skills hound and sharp and still killing and maiming and collecting things when I can. Of course, you know, living a busy life and being technically elderly, that doesn't always work, you know, but I still try to, you know, keep practice of it, you know, so to speak, like a, you know, if a bass player of a band or something like that, you want to keep your skills honed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm sure you're passing down the legacy to your children. That's a wonderful thing, Predator. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been really great. It's I feel like it's a lifelong dream of mine to to really connect with you, and um, I just appreciate your work wholeheartedly. Well, I thank you very much for your kind words, and it's good, it's good to know that you are a fan. And I'm glad that I was able to tell you that I am also a fan of both you and Dustin. And I think you guys do great things, and you curate a lot of cool and obscure things to a lot of people. And I think that's just fascinating. So I very much appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, sort of showcase my career and my life. And, uh, you know, Get to know me a little bit. Man, that's poetic. Ton, we're kind of like the predators of, of radio and the fact that we like <laughs> are out collecting C list celebrities. Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, be careful what you well, say. I will to say really quickly that your interview, I mean, you've done fabulous many interviews, but Linnea Quigley was probably one of my favorites. Are you sweet on her, Predator? Well, I mean, I have eyes, don't I? <laughs> Correct answer. That's yeah, true. that was a really good one. That was a lovely time. And then uh, didn't we get to meet her at a Comic-Con thing shortly after that interview also? I think we did. She's a wonderful person. We also did have uh, Predator alumnus Bill Duke and Jesse Ventura on this program. Mm-hmm. Really good stuff. And now Predator. Yeah. Now Predator. It's beautiful. Yeah, you sort of come full circle with everything. And, you know, too bad some of the folks that were along with the production and uh moving this along of uh, with us anymore because there's a lot of that but um you know r.i.p stan winston bill paxton carl weathers just you know such a good strong force and uh you know making great cinema and making uh the storyline believable well predator it's been great and if the right project does come along for you soon we, we'd love to have you back on the air to uh, discuss and uh, help promote anything you're working on Yes, absolutely, friends. Anytime you'd like to uh, have another session or sort of discuss things, uh, you know where I am, deep in outer space. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Predator. No, man, thank you. And thank you, Ton. Uh, You fellas have been more than pleasant, and we shall do this again sometime. Lovely. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye-bye. That was Predator. Wow.